this to end, but this is our last speaker tonight. So, um, and actually it's uh, a woman that we used to share the same space at CTV together. Uh, so our final storyteller is Fran Pepper Shannon, uh, who may be known to our audience as the iconic host of the Canadian children's television series, Romper Room. Yeah. But it's in her present day work as a progressive Muslim and social justice activist that is she is particularly pleased with. Fran is the coordinator and co-founder of KW El Tawhid, 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 thank you, uh, Juma Circle Unity Mosque. It's an inclusive, gender equal, and LGBTQ plus affirmative mosque in Waterloo. Did you know we had that? It's pretty amazing. So thank you for that. She's all, yeah, yeah. She's also the mother of a wonderful son, Winston, living in London, England. And is he here? Oh! Home for the holidays, amazing. Uh, and Fran was recently awarded the Senate of Canada's Canada 150 Plus Award for Outstanding Citizenship. Fran, please come up. Do you want this here? Do you want I do. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm not as talented as the speakers who went before me who can do it just without the written word. I begin, and I'm going to do this in 10 minutes because it's just an old bunch of that one. So I begin, as I begin everything, and with these words, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the tenderly compassionate, the infinitely merciful. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you all. My name is Fran and I would like to say how much I have been moved by the women who spoke before me. Wow. And our singers this evening, thank you Jade, and thank, thank you so much for your beautiful voice and your guitar playing. I'm thrilled to be here with you today as your final speaker and I understand your oldest speaker I'm 62 years of age, yes. <laughs> and now some of you may remember me from an earlier age when I was in my mid twenties and thirties and perhaps this will refresh your memory. It's the magic mirror, it's the magic mirror. And uh, I keep it at home, don't tell anyone but I have the original. I saved it when they were striking our set and tearing everything down. And through this mirror, I used to see the children at home when I was Miss Fran on Romp Room. And I promise I see you all today. And you're looking good. And I especially see Carolina, who is an amazing woman. I think we need an, a round of applause for Carolina. Carolina. People often ask me how I came to be Miss Fran on TV. And I answered that it was through a process of being interviewed and then auditioned with 300 women in Toronto. That was back when I was 24 years old, my son's age right now. And at the time that I auditioned for Romp Room, I was a children's library assistant and I hadn't a clue about life. And now at the ripe old age of 62, I have some insights into life and it is these insights and thoughts about integrity and feminism and self-respect and remaining strong when the world is trying to tear you apart that I'm going to tell you in 10 minutes. First of all, I would like to say that I have been lucky and from my perspective as a Muslim, I've been truly blessed. And I remember this when I'm down or in despair. I was lucky and blessed to be born into a family that was able to have food on the table. We weren't rich by any means, but we did have food security. I was fortunate and blessed to not have to face the challenges that my sisters who are indigenous have faced or the challenges faced by sisters of color when they encounter racism, discrimination. I was lucky and blessed to be the host of Romper Room for 14 years and after I left my TV career and got married, I was lucky and blessed to have my son Winston at the age of 38 and then to go on and have a fairly successful media relations and communications company. And on February the 1st, 2008, I was truly blessed to say the Shahada. 
And that's a statement of belief in Arabic and become a Muslim after years of wandering on a spiritual odyssey. These days, I feel very fortunate and honored to be the coordinator and co-founder of the KW El Tohi Juma Circle Unity Mosque, which is the only inclusive, gender equal, LGBTQ plus affirmative mosque in Waterloo Region, and we have had our struggles. I've been many things in my life, and I've traveled down many paths, and I've been fortunate and blessed, but it hasn't always been easy. I've had my share of difficult times, too, especially the death of my father after a long struggle with many illnesses, and then my husband's decision to leave our marriage very shortly after my father died, and then my own battle with breast cancer that was particularly devastating because my son was very young at the time, bless him. Job struggles and family struggles, all through the ups and downs, I learned a few things that resonate with me. And they are, as I think you mentioned, you have to be true to yourself. You have to respect yourself. You've heard those words so many times, but you know those words are damn straight. They are righteous rules. You have to be true to yourself no matter the cost, and you have to respect yourself along the way. Self-respect is a hard-won prize, but it's so important. As one of my respected teachers, Gloria Steinem, once said, quote, self-esteem isn't everything, it's just that there's nothing without it. I still struggle with self-esteem at times and self-doubts, and I certainly did not have much self-esteem as a young woman in my teens and 20s. The men that I chose to date at the time, I picked some doozies, and they did not have a lot of respect for me, and they did not treat me particularly well, and I allowed that disrespect, and why? Because I had a lack of self-esteem. I didn't respect myself. Now, I can attribute that lack of self-esteem to many things, perhaps to the faith of my childhood, which taught me that Eve was second to Adam, and which taught me that women were largely responsible for humanity's downfall, and which saw me born with a soul that was stained by original sin. And maybe it was because I was a young girl raised just before women's liberation and gender equality became forces that guided women to set us free. In my life, it was up to me to earn my own self-respect. And I did that by reading and emulating women teachers, women I didn't know, but boy, I loved what they wrote. And I hope you will write down what you said today, especially because, and you, Deb, and you, because those were beautiful, beautiful, beautiful speeches. Like Gloria Steinem, who I have always adored. Like Jermaine Greer, Betty Friedan, Angela Davis, Ma Maya Angelou, and other feminists. And later in life, Amina Wadud, who is a Muslim feminist. And yes, boys and girls, there is such a thing as Muslim feminists who has taught me that God sees me as a whole with a beautiful soul, and God sees in me every way that I am equal to every man walking on this earth. Alhamdulillah. Now, as far as being true to yourself and remaining steadfast and persevering when the world tries to tear you apart, I would say that you need to have two things to stay strong. You need to have a vision, and you need to have a tribe that supports you right? You need to have a vision that guides you, a vision that gets you out of bed every day and propels you forward, even if it's eight and nine months later. A vision about something that you're passionate about, a vision that makes the world a better place. Only you know what that vision is, and you realize it in the quiet times of the day, in the very depths of your soul and heart, and then you have to hang on to that vision even through the dark days, because the dark days are going to come. And when those difficult days hit, you're going to need friends, friends who support your vision, even though they might not necessarily believe in what you believe. But the bottom line is they believe in you. They are your tribe, your chosen tribe. My best friend, Dan, has been by my side for 41 years. He's not my partner. He's my best friend. He doesn't share my faith. He's not a Muslim. He doesn't strive as I do. He doesn't share my vision, really, 
which is to see that all religions, including Islam, be gender equal in principle and practice, and that all religions, including Islam, be LGBTQ plus affirmative and welcoming. But he loves me and he believes in me and he's the leader of my tribe. How do you create a tribe to support you, even in the darkest hours? By giving to and believing in others, by sincerely loving and getting out there to build up others, to help them realize their visions and dreams, which is why I'm so happy to be here to support your vision and dream. By being there for others when the world tries to tear them apart. My friends, as a Muslim feminist, I would like to suggest to you that we already belong to a very strong tribe. We are women, the tribe of women, with the exception of the wonderful men in the room. And <laughs> women are strong, right? Damn strong. Don't ever forget your resilience. I'm reminded of a quote by the woman G.D. Anderson on this topic, quote, feminism isn't about making women strong. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world perceives that strength. It's about changing the way the world perceives our strength. My sisters and brothers, I would suggest that we look to other women to create our tribes and then nurture those women. Believe in those women, love those women, fight for those women, for as the writer Audre Lorde stated, quote, I am not free while any woman is unfree, even when her shackles are very different from my own. Friends, I'm fortunate to have a faith that gives me strength and meaning, but when my days turn upside down and I feel lost, that faith in God only truly came to me after I developed faith in myself first. And that faith only came when I realized that I was worthy of knowing God and that I was worthy, right, Devon, of being loved by God. So sisters and brothers, I wish you all the love of the creator. I wish you a tribe to support you. I wish you a vision to sustain you. And I wish you one of the greatest gifts of all, self-respect. Assalamu alaikum.